ChatGPT4 is now live. And I have to be honest with you guys, I was expecting this update to be very underwhelming, but boy was I wrong. When I used ChatGPT4 for myself, it felt like I had just discovered ChatGPT for the first time again. Every day that I would use ChatGPT3, I would be blown away, and now that GPT-4 is out, it's almost a whole nother world. I want to dive right into this video to show you what ChatGPT-4 has to offer. So this is very exciting stuff on OpenAI's page that have a big article on GPT-4, and it has now been released to the public. So I was very excited when I logged on ChatGPT today and saw GPT-4 in the model box. When you click in this drop down box now, you can see the different levels of speed, reasoning, and conciseness that each model has to offer. Starting at the legacy, you can see if reasoning has a 3, has a 2 on speed, and conciseness is a 1. To the default model, reasoning is a 3, speed is a 5, and conciseness is a 2. So it is getting better from legacy to default. But then when you go down to GPT 4, you'll notice that the reasoning is a 5, speed is only a 2, and the conciseness is a 4. So switching to the GPT-4 model, you will notice that you are giving up a little bit of speed. But if you have tasks that require advanced reasoning or complex instructions, then GPT-4 will blow 3.5 out of the water. It can take in much more intricate data, it gives a lot better reasoning, and just more concise responses. First, GPT-4 has gotten much more creative. As it says here, it can generate, edit, and iterate with other users on creative and technical writing tasks, such as composing songs, writing screenplays, or learning a user's writing style. So that's what I'm really loving is that it can adapt to the user. So if you have a certain style you like to write in, it can kind of take all that information in on the spot and it can use that as a writing style from there on out. Now this next feature I'm about to show you is probably the one that shocked me the most. ChatGPT now allows for visual input. As it says here, GPT-4 can accept images as inputs and generate captions, classifications, and analyses. So what does it mean by that? This is what it means. So here's your input. Uh, the input was, what can I make with these ingredients? And they uploaded a picture of some flour and eggs. And ChatGPT generated an output for what it sees in the image. So it's analyzing what is in the picture, and then it's giving recipes based off that. So it's not even going off your text anymore, but it's going off the actual pictures that you upload. The next upgrade GPT-4 allows for is longer context and is now capable of handling over 25,000 words of text. So this means that writing blog posts and long form content with GPT-4 has just gotten so much easier. If you remember with the 3.5 model, it doesn't allow for that long of text. And even though you're giving up a little bit of speed from 3.5 to 4, the amount of words you get in return is definitely worth the decrease in speed. So now let's compare and contrast a prompt example from 3.5 to 4 to show you the insane creativity difference between the two models. So we are currently in GPT 3.5, this is the default version, and what you will notice is that it is a lot less creative than GPT 4, and I didn't even realize this beforehand. So I've just copy and pasted a pretty complex prompt. It goes, explain the plot of Cinderella in a sentence where each word has to begin with the next letter in the alphabet from A to Z without repeating any letters. Now, I have a feeling GPT 3.5 will not understand this as good as 4 will. So let's send this off and put these two models to the test. So as you can see here, all it did was explain the plot of Cinderella. It didn't follow any of the instructions I had in the back half of the sentence. After Cinderella, that's AC, so it's already failing on the second word. This should go A, B, C, D, and so on. Now let's see what ChatGPT 4 does and if it can handle this task. So I have the exact same prompt pasted in here and I'm going to send it off. As you can see, it's already following instructions much better. It starts off with A, then goes to B, C, D, E, F, and so on and so forth. It's completed the entire alphabet without repeating any words and it's a complete sentence that makes sense. And to be honest, I could not even describe how long it would take me to come up with something like this. So how much better is ChatGPT 4 compared to 3.5 and 3? You know, what are the actual numbers and where is the actual data for how much better and how much more accurate GPT-4 is? On OpenAI's website on the product page for GPT-4, you can see how much better it's doing and how well it's outperforming ChatGPT and some of these percentiles among these test takers. In the uniform bar exam, regular ChatGPT was placed in the 10th percentile of other test takers who have taken the bar exam. GPT-4 was placed in the 90th percentile, so that went up by 80 percentile points. 
In the Biology Olympiad, ChatGPT was in the 31st percentile, while GPT-4 with Vision was in the 99th percentile. Now these are some huge improvements in factual responses. On OpenAI's website, they have some very interesting statistics. GPT-4 is 82% less likely to respond to requests for disallowed content, and 40% more likely to produce factual responses than GPT-3.5. So not only is it safer, but it's a lot smarter. Now let's take a look at some of the organizations that OpenAI has collaborated with to build innovative products using GPT-4. This part was most surprising to me because some of these products I've been seeing used every day, I used in my past, or I'm planning to use for my future. So it's very interesting to see how GPT-4 affects these products for the better. The first one is Duolingo. Duolingo is an app to help you learn another language, I personally believe that language learning with the use of GPT-4 will help you learn the language a lot faster. The next organization is Be My Eyes, and this looks like some sort of food scanning app, and it's using GPT-4's visual accessibility features that they've just added. Now Stripe is the next organization, and this is exciting because I personally use Stripe for my payment processor. So the integration of GPT-4 with Stripe is nothing but good, people aren't losing money as much, and it's also helping the users better move around Stripe's dashboard. A couple more organizations that they've worked with are Morgan Stanley, Khan Academy, and they've actually worked with the government of Iceland, it seems. So this was a quick review and first take on GPT-4. I'm very excited for the future of this technology, and I am very glad that GPT-4 was more than I expected. So if you found that the 3.5 model couldn't quite answer your questions factually, then I recommend trying out GPT-4 for yourself and seeing if it can now answer those questions. Of course, once again, you are losing a little bit of speed, but you're also gaining visual accessibility, more creativity, and longer context. So if you're someone who likes writing blogs with ChatGPT, I'm sure that this is going to be a very big help to you because it now allows for 25,000 words. Now with time, I think this will only get better. Let me know if you want me to do a full review on certain prompts you can use with ChatGPT4, and I will be sure to get that out. If you enjoyed this video or it was helpful or insightful in any way, then I would highly appreciate it if you dropped a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.